One of the most important parts of teaching is being able to assess your students and in this case we're going to use an assignment as a way of assessing the student that will also be added to Gradebook later on. But first of all let's have a look at the assignment, how we add an assignment and the settings that go with an assignment. We're in our course, we have edit mode already turned on. We're going to add an activity or resource. Because it's an activity that they actually have to interact with, we can go to activity and assignment will be the first one. If you selected all, assignment is actually the first one anyway. So let's go to assignment. We're going to add a name to our assignment. In this case, it will be actually our second task. So we're going to call this task two because our first task in this particular series uh, was looking at a quiz. So if you haven't looked at the quiz yet, jump back and have a look at quizzes. But our assignment name is task two. I'll put in here description text rather than the actual description and activity instruction text. So you can see where the different things appear as we're going through this. You can also add additional files that you may want with an assignment for a student to download and to use. This, in this case, I don't have that, so we don't need it. We have the availability. We can allow them from today. We can set a due date. We can also set a remind me grade date and a cutoff date. So if they have to have it completed by a certain date, uh, set the cutoff date. And then after that, remind me I need to go back in and actually do the grading because everyone submitted their work and I'll need to grade it. Or the teacher assessor needs to grade it. Now the submission types, uh, it's an assignment and you can actually have the option of them uh, entering their text for their assignment directly into the browser and straight into the assignment window just as text or you can allow a file submission or you can have both. So if you do want to have the online text option, which I'll show you what both look like, you can choose online text and then set a word limit. And a word limit is only because it's online text, it knows what the number of words are. Uh, so you can actually do a, a word count on the online submission when it's in text. When it's a file submission, you can't do that. A number of files that can be uploaded, you can choose the number of files. Obviously, if you get rid of that, you don't get the option to do the file submission area. So we put the file submission back in and you can allow it to a certain amount of files. You probably often only want one file, but sometimes you want more. You can also choose the size of the file or maximum size. Um, in this case, 256 is the site limit. You may want them to keep it to under 20 meg, just to be more sensible for everybody. That's up to you though. And then the accepted file types depends on the type of file you'd like them to submit. In our case, if we go choose, we go down to documents, or actually we're actually asking them to submit an SVG file, aren't we? So we can go down to, here we've got SVG, and choose images used on the web. And because it is an SVG file, we can actually tick that one. And the only file type they can upload is SVG. So if we save it, they can only upload their SVG file, which is quite useful because that's what this exercise is all about. Then we can go back to feedback types. So you can use annotate PDF. Now that's irrelevant. Uh, I should say comments here first. You can add comments as feedback to the student to let them know what you think of their work or what they need to improve on. If you don't grade it, but you want to send back a comment, you can put some feedback in. So we'll leave that on. Annotate PDF is more if they've uploaded a PDF and you want to put some annotation on there to explain things about the content, which is part of what Moodle can do if you have it installed correctly. Uh, that will work. We'll turn that off. We'll leave offline grading worksheet and feedback files for the moment. Comment in line. You can actually have that in line with the content and their description. If you enable the submission text, we were copied into the feedback comment field during grading, making it easy to comment in line using a different color or to edit the original text. So I generally leave that as no, but you can change it to yes if you find that that's just a better way to do things. When it comes to submission, there is a couple of things that Moodle does a little bit different than most places. They have the requirement for students to click on the submit button to do the actual submission. So what that means is a student types in all their answers and they can keep saving it. They can upload their files and they can save it. They can come back another day and replace it. But when it's time for them to actually submit their completed work, that's when they click on the submit button. 
and you can decide if it's required for them to click submit or whether you can actually grade it based on whatever they left there last. So we'll choose yes so that I can show you that process. Then there's also the required students accepts the submission statement. So that means there's a statement to say that this is my work and all of that. So let's go yes because I want to show you what that looks like, the submission statement. Then we have additional attempts, never. So usually once a submission of an assignment is submitted, that's it. The only way that you go back and redo that is if the grader says, sorry, that submission's failed, you need to go back and do that again. And you can set that as manually, manually so that uh, an assessor can go back in and manually say you need to reattempt that. Or you can have automatic until pass. So that means if the assessor or the teacher fails the student, or the student use fails, says that they haven't completed it successfully, when they submit, the, when the teacher or assessor submits that, it will then go back and automatically uh, allow a new submission to happen for the student so they can go and resubmit. So that's actually really useful to change that often to automatically until pass if it is a required to pass. Never just means it's that's it, they've submitted it if they either pass or they don't, um, and that's okay. Group submission settings is in relation to groups, which is looked at in different topics, so that's an option there as well. Notifications, notify the grader about submissions. That can be useful, so the grader will be any of the teachers or non editing teachers in that class. They can be notified if you like that there's been a submission there. That is useful, so you can say yes to that. Notify graders about late submissions, so that means that somebody has submitted it, but they've submitted it after the date. If you didn't have the close date on there, then they can do that, so that's another option. And default for notify student, uh, when grading each student, should notify student be ticked by default. That's a little tricky without showing you what it looks like when you grade, but when a student or assessor grades something, there's a little tick box that says notify student that you've just graded their work. You can decide whether that tick box is ticked by default, which it is in this case, which means that when you go and grade it for a student, the student will automatically get an email saying, you've or a notification that you've been graded and this is your grade. That's an option there, it's set to yes by default. Next one is the grade. Now this is where things get a little bit crazy and a little bit scary. And for this one, we're going to have 100 as our grade. We're going to leave it as point because there's a whole separate topic on setting up grades and setting up scales and all sorts of things. Our grading method, we're going to leave it as simple direct grading because again, we're going to look at uh, a marking guide and rubric as a totally separate topic. Grade category will be default. Grade to pass. In this case, it's 100%. So we're going to put 100 in. The maximum grade is 100. Pass grade is 100. Uh, anonymous submissions. Uh, hide the identity of the student from the markers. You can do that if you need to, and that's fine. In, by default, it's no, but you can set that to yes. And then when they go to grade, it just says it's student XYZ. It doesn't give their name, and they can grade without knowing who it is, which can be useful hide greater identity from the students so they don't know who actually did the marking. By default it's no and use marking workflow. We'll leave that as no because again that's another whole topic with grading that needs to be looked at separately. There is a way of having a workflow to grading and that's stages that they can go through uh, before being released to the student. So that may mean as it says here multiple rounds of marking. So there may be someone who assesses it first, puts the grade in, then it has to go to somebody else who then has to relook at that and decide whether that is actually the correct grade or whether anything needs to be modified or to have it approved and then it goes off to the student after that. So there is a workflow that can be designed to go with grading. Now the last few are our common module settings that are common to everything. So the only thing that we will look at different, because restrict access is the same, is activity completion. Show activity completion when conditions are met and the conditions for an assignment. Uh, student must view, student must receive a grade, student must receive a passing grade, and student must submit. Now because we've said that a student must submit to actually submit their assignment, it also makes sense to have that the completion is based on that submission as well. The only time this becomes a little bit crazy is where you might be giving a grade for a student that hasn't submitted their work through this system but they've submitted it on paper. You'll need to go in and change that setting or get the student to submit even though they've submitted it on paper just to tick off that students must submit this activity complete. Now that doesn't quite work so what you would do is remove that tick if you were having paper-based submissions 
Otherwise, a student has to submit it inside this platform uh, to be able to, to actually complete the activity, in which case those two would be removed and you don't need to worry about grade and a passing grade if they were doing paper-based submissions that are then marked off in this system. So I'll just change those back, save and display. So you can see here that the description text has appeared as the description. So if we jump back to settings, you've probably forgotten now what that was. That's the description there. And in our case, it's to, you know, the description is submit your SVG file that you created. Oops. So that would have created the SVG file previously. Uh, and then the activity instructions. Uh, these are actions you would like the student to complete for this assignment. This is only shown on the submission page where a student edits and submits their assignment. Okay. So this isn't the actual description. Uh, this isn't the actual assignment, this part here. The activity instructions are just instructions on how to submit or um, how to complete their submission as opposed to the actual assignment instructions which go in the description. Okay, uh, back to display. We're going to look at what this assignment looks like from student view. So I've logged in as a student and we're going to go down to our assignment task which is your first SVG image. So we click on that. You can see we have our description and text. Submit your SVG file that you created. So then we choose add submission. We have some online text that we allowed that when we set it up and we have our file submission. So let's go and grab the student's SVG file. So we can drop that on there and save changes. Now it says draft, not submitted. So this means the student has loaded up their file. They can go back in there and edit that or they can remove the submission, but it's not until they actually select submit assignment that they complete the assignment. Now in your instructions here, you should actually have that information in there explaining to them some information about the submission as well. So if I collect submit assignment, it now asks me for a confirmation. This submission is my own work, except where I've acknowledged the use for the work of other people. Then it asks, are you sure you want to submit your work for grading? You'll not be able to make any more changes. So they can now select continue to finish their submission off. So it is now fully submitted and you can see there that the student viewed it. Uh, the students made a submission. They now, the other things they'll do is receive a grade and receive a passing grade because they're the requirements that we put in for this particular assignment. Jumping back to our teacher view, we can now go and view all submissions and you can see that student submitted for grading. So we can actually go in and grade. Now this was that bit about notify students that I mentioned before. Uh, notify student means that if that's ticked, which it is by default, it will send out an email to the student saying, hey, you've just had your grading done and a notification will come up in Moodle as well. So what I can do here, it's not graded yet. I can go and view the SVG to have a look. I can make some comments. Now I can actually just make some comments and save the comments and leave it. So the student can then see those comments and fix things up if they're not right. Or I can put in a grade. And in this case, I'll just say that was fantastic. 100, great work. If I needed to, notify the student. Otherwise, save changes. And that's all done. So submitted for grading and graded. If I jump back to our student view, you can see now the student has received a grade and they've received a past grade. So that's all graded and has the grade date, when it was graded, who it was graded by and my feedback which says great work and their grade all there for them. So that's how we create an assignment and a little bit about the grading part because that's relevant to the settings that we set in our assignment when we first created it.